I'm Steve Bijou, and this is Down Home Corner. You know, I grew up in the Maritimes, a place rich with stories and storytelling. And I realized one thing, everybody has a story and we are all connected. On this episode, we connect with producer Douglas Romano. He's a man who's worked with many, many people in the music industry, including Steve Bijou. So let's get this episode out for all my musician friends. I want to see if we can inspire you to create out there. So let's get right to the show. Have you ever had a dream that you just couldn't let go of, no matter how long you had it or whatever life put in your path? Somewhere along the line, that dream crossed the line and it became something you had to do, not want to do. It no longer remained your choice. It wasn't up to you anymore. It was up to you to make it happen. You were the vessel as well as its creator. Passion was now in charge. Well, it happened to me. I was blessed or cursed with such a dream and more accurately, such a journey. In some ways, I'm still connected to this dream because it spawned other passionate dreams too. I dreamed of writing, recording, and releasing my own CD. That was the dream, an album of 10 original songs recorded with all professional musicians. And so I began to take that dream seriously and it began to seriously change my life. Everything I did had to get me closer to finishing that album. There was a lot of work to do, a commitment to make and money to save. And if I was going to do this, it had to be done right. It couldn't be some half-assed or amateur production. The idea was you could like this album or hate it, but you could never say it sounded amateur or sounded low budget. It had to stand alone. It wasn't enough just to be good enough. It had to be good. Now, I wasn't professional, but I had planned to hire professionals. So that meant I had to seriously up my game. If I wasn't professional, I had to at least sound like one. So that meant I had to commit to serious singing lessons, and I did. I took a bus from Hamilton into Toronto twice a week, rode the TTC all the way to North York to spend an hour studying with Diana Yampolsky of the Royan School for the Performing Arts. Three hours of commute time for one hour of singing lessons. While most of Diana's students took out 10 to 20 hours with her, I stayed for more than 100 hours. I was paying the price, literally. It wasn't about experience. It was about the hard work. I got that. So I needed to find a great producer. I knew this was one of the biggest pieces of the puzzle for me in this dream. My first attempt didn't work out. And I'm so fortunate it didn't. Since I was living in Hamilton at the time, I started locally. Grant Avenue Studios. Now this was the studio built and formerly owned by Daniel Lanois. Now if you don't know, he's the guy that produced people like Bob Dylan, Peter Gabriel, my favorite group U2, just to name a few. Now did I think Daniel Lanois was going to produce Steve Bijou's album? Well, no. Not really. Well, maybe a little. But it was the place, the vibe, the mindset I was trying to connect to. I was looking to connect to magic. After all, this was the same studio you 2 had worked in. I used the same mic Bono had sung into. But like Bono said one time, greatness and magic were no longer in the room. Greatness had left the building. The following week, Grant Avenue Studio was about to go into lockdown because some guy was about to record his latest album, which was called A Painter Passing Through. Some folk singer, you may have heard of him, his name is Gordon Lightfoot. Anyway, I didn't want to wait till after Gordon's album was finished to start mine. So I began looking around for another producer. And through my singing coach, I got the name of Douglas Romano. Now, I knew nothing about Douglas Romano, except apparently he was a nice guy and really great to work with. I nervously called Doug and I set up a meeting. Well, that changed my life. It really did. I didn't just hire the best producer I could have possibly worked with, but I gained a friendship as well and an insight 
into a world that fascinated and intrigued me, the world of music. Because of Doug, I realized my dream, my album, which I called Love, Lies, and Other Obsessions. And because of him, I worked on new dreams, and those lessons and experiences still shape what I do and who I am today. So meet the man connected to many of my dreams and the dreams of many others. And if you're a musician, you may want to listen closely. Well, Douglas Romano, welcome to Down Home Corner. Thanks so much for joining us. It is a pleasure to be here, Steve. Let me tell you, too, uh, you know, I guess full disclosure here, Doug and I know a couple of famous people. Uh, we know uh, we know the author, uh, Patricia Romano, don't we? You know you're familiar with her work, aren't you? <laughs> I am. It's Patricia Westerhoff. She kept her last name. Ah, a smart lady, isn't she? Well, you know, we know uh, happy wife, happy life. <laughs> well, you guys are the cutest couple I've ever met, I think, too. You know, you guys are just, you walk the walk, you know, and it's uh, it, it's it's really, it, it, it's a pleasure to know people like you, and you're so creative, you know, so it's got to be tough in the neighborhood at Christmas parties, so, hey, what'd you do this year? Well, I cleaned out the backyard finally, and I got that fence put up. What'd you do? Well, you know, I, I did some recording with Justin Bieber and, uh, you know, I wrote a book. You know, it's, 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 <laughs> uh, you know, it's not as glamorous as it sounds. <laughs> <laughs> well, how, how are you? Uh, how are you and the family doing with the uh, with the COVID-19 uh, uh, slow down and shutdown type of thing? Uh, we are well. We are um, happily hunkered down. I've got two daughters in different cities. They're both safe and healthy. Uh, my wife and I are busy working from home. So um, I'm mixing and producing tracks. I set up a, a, a temporary home studio. Uh, and then once a week, I drive back over to the main studio and, you know, do finalized mixes and print uh, stems and all the things that um, but on a bigger set of speakers and um, with a more controlled environment. But we're doing well. You know, it's um, it's a weird time for everybody. And I feel for people that have lost work and are feeling additional anxiety. Um, and uh, I think we'll get through it. Um, mm. I, know, I know we'll get through it. The question it will, will be how will each of us be at the other end of it? Yes. And that's where I like to encourage artists to be as proactive as possible um, to continue creating work and mm -hmm. being ready with final mixes, uh, mastered tracks, so that um, when it's appropriate to start dropping singles or touring again, that they'll be at the front of the line, not somewhere lost in the middle or at the back. Exactly. This is the time to shine if, if you, you know, like buy your time well at this point, you know. And, and I do want to talk a little more about that near the end here. I'm glad you brought that up. But uh, just to give us your timeline quickly here, you, you're you from Calgary originally, was it? Yes, I was uh, born in northern Alberta and then uh, I was raised in uh, both Calgary and up in northern British Columbia in Terrace and then moved back to Calgary. Eventually made my way to Ontario, the, the center of the universe. Now, when you came to Toronto, do you, was it producing you had in mind, or were you just a, a musician looking for a gig type of thing? I was originally thinking I would start a band and become an artist, which I did for a few years, and um, it was lots of fun, and I had lots of energy in my early 20s uh, for that, that crazy uh, game. But I'm not really that interested in fronting a band. So um, I, I was always in the studio. I was producing records since I was 16 and realized, you know, really early on, I was very fortunate to figure out my um, end game. And so I was producing full time at 24 for other artists. And uh, that's what I've been doing my whole life. And through your career, you've had a chance to work with a lot of different artists and, and a lot of different respectable artists, you know, blues artists like Michael Pickett uh, you've worked with. And didn't he win a Juno or he was nominated for one as well as you? I produced uh, two my, uh, <laughs> I produced two records for Michael Pickett. Uh, both were nominated for Junos. Both were nominated for Maple Blues Awards, for National Jazz Awards. Um, and I don't remember which ones he won, uh, to be honest. I think the, the Junos were nominations, and I think he picked up a win in the Maple Blues and the National Jazz Awards. So, yeah, those were those were good times. 
What I respect about you too over the years is you've worked with uh, some indigenous artists uh, and I, I really respect that. What do you think you've been able to help them achieve or what was your experience like working with them? Well, making records with uh, Midnight Shine, Kenny Starr, the trade-offs up in the Calibut. Um, I've learned more than I gave them, uh, to be honest. I've been very humbled um, to work with such talented people that have such a sense of identity um, and mission. And it, it's been a, just a true pleasure to have my world expanded um, to understand a little bit more of what it is to be an Indigenous artist in, in Canada. Um, and uh, it's, an, it's just an honor to um, work with such talented musicians with, you know, uh, such color, colorful perspective, you know, they, and the, even the themes of what Indigenous artists write about. I mean, they're human and they are intuitively aware of their surroundings um, and it comes through in their music. I just interviewed Jeff Barnaby, uh, the filmmaker who just released Blood Quantum, you know, and most of it was filmed back home in Listigush and those areas, you know. Um, there's a certain uh, amount of storytelling, you know, that goes along with both movie making and music making, wouldn't you say? Absolutely. I just scored a film with Kenny Starr called Edge of the Knife, which won uh, Vancouver International Film Festival's um, film of the year. And. Um, that is all about telling stories, but again, the indigenous perspectives are unique, each of them. So, uh, I just, I'm not an indigenous person myself, so I consider it a real honor to work alongside these uh, talented people. Are you excited where the music industry and uh, careers of indigenous artists are going right now? Oh, absolutely. It's on the uptake. Indigenous artists have a greater voice. Um, and there is a new openness to their stories and their identities um, and how we can impact Canadians. You know, I, for a long time, I wanted to have you on this program, and I couldn't think of a East Coast connection because the show is connected to the East Coast, you know, the, in the, the genesis of the program. Uh, but yet, you know, the theme is everybody has a story and we are all connected. And it was <laughs> it was so obvious to me, I didn't get it. But uh, the theme music for this show, I mean, the music that people hear at the beginning and the end of this show was a song that you and I wrote and recorded together called Desert Road. So that's, you know, it's funny how it comes full circle. And, and if I was looking for an East Coast connection, well, there you go. <laughs> you know, uh, all music comes out of community, um, whether it be pop music in um, clubs in L.A. or whether it be um, an indigenous artist that lives in, um, on reserve uh, around James Bay, um, you know, music has roots and it has a sound and, and flavor to it. So I find that always fascinating, you know, that it's, it is by definition cultural. Absolutely. And it's all about communicating in one form or other, you know? Yeah. It's, it's the best music is always human. Mm. And even if it's, even if it's expressed electronically, there are humans putting the electronics together. So um, that is what's so powerful about music is that it's uh, it's one of the most human things we can do. Yeah, AI can't bring you emotion. AI can't bring you, you know, uh, or automation can't bring you, uh, this needs to be softer, this needs to be louder, this needs to be more, uh, you feel this or that. You know, you, you can't bring that to automation. I mean, it has to be a human element. Now, Doug, of course, you work with me on my project, my CD called Love, Lies and Other Obsessions. And it was, you know, for me, a life changing experience in many ways. It's a milestone in my life because of all the what I've learned through that, you know. But aside from Steve Bijou, you got to work with at least a couple of famous people over the years. Tell us the yeah. story. Tell us the story of Justin Bieber. It was a call late over the Christmas holidays or something. It's true. Uh, as a few years ago, I was working uh uh, freelance as an engineer and getting calls from one of the studios downtown and around quarter to midnight I got a text from the studio manager saying hey can you do a session uh, and I said really 
are we starting now? Well, who is it? And, and it was Bieber. And I was like, come on. And he said, yeah, really, really. So I went down to the studio. We set up and around 1230. His whole crew kind of rolls in a number of vehicles. And of course, we've got uh, gates to keep uh, fans out. And I started working um, for on and off for about a week, uh, just cutting vocals with him. And uh, yeah, it's a really interesting experience to work with someone with that level of entourage and uh, um, just to see some of the, I mean, sh- sh- certainly to see some of the talent, but also to see just some of the crazy. Yeah. And, and you said you were also impressed with his work ethic, weren't you? Yeah. When he was working, it was great. <laughs> Ethically speaking. <laughs> yeah. He's, uh, he's a fantastic singer. He's a talented dude there's no question about it and it's really a thrill to uh you know you've got the mic open and the voice you're hearing is justin bieber i mean that's a it's a very uh specific sound it's recognizable we've all heard it for years so yeah Mm -hmm. that's that's its own little thrill right there was he happy with the experience do you think yeah absolutely was was a good good experience all around what, what, was it a song that we know or did that ever come to uh, to light? Not at this point. We worked on, I'm going to say, four songs over that week. And they were writing them and workshopping them. He had uh, a co-writer in. Uh, he had Entourage. He was killing some time in between um, bouts of bad behavior. <laughs> uh, nice that you could help him with that. You know, I tried to keep him on the straight and narrow, but I was, I was frankly unsuccessful. <laughs> well, it's a great story to tell, though, you know, I mean, and, uh, and really great experience. And you never know, one of those songs could bubble up and, and, you know, woo, all of a sudden the name Douglas Romano is out there as a, a household name in the music industry, you know, but uh, well, my Twitter, my Twitter feed went up substantially for a period of time there. Hey, if you get five more followers, that's what it's all about, man. You know, I got I got six thousand followers in one day. <laughs> oh, really? Wow, that's yeah, pretty no, it, pretty impressive. If you're if you're in the wake of of a boat that big, um, you you feel some waves. Yeah, it's um, it's pretty incredible the the career there. So it was a great experience for me, uh, and I actually took away a few little tips on how to produce vocals in a very specific kind of L.A. pop way, and the workflow is something I still use. Your work takes you now between uh, L.A. and uh, Toronto and Nashville on a regular basis, you know, so uh, I'm sure you're probably going through some travel withdrawal right now, but uh, explain why finding the right producer is important to an artist, and when do they go looking for, for that person? An artist producer relationship is similar to an actor director relationship you're not taking away anything that the actor's doing you're actually magnifying it and trying to capture the very best so that the end result is something that the world uh enjoys so you're really trying to move the artist's career forward uh artists that self-produce have to do that themselves and i always um draw the analogy of taking a selfie as opposed to having a professional photo shoot Mm -hmm. Uh, you know people that take photos of themselves um can do a very nice job of a selfie and yet somehow it doesn't uh have the same impact as when a professional photographer lights it frames it and then pulls a certain look or a certain stance or a certain motion uh into the frame and that's why you have that relationship. I mean, the best artists in the world uh, work with producers to help them. So that's why it's important to have a producer. When to have a producer? I think when you're ready to put out something that you want the world to hear. If you're still working on demos at home, there's no need to have a producer. You can mess around on your computer. That's what everybody does now, and there's nothing wrong with that. The confusion comes when there is an incorrect labeling of what is a demo and what is a master. And the uh, industry is so competitive right now that to put out anything shy of a competitive master is a mistake. 
people who listen to music don't know the difference, you know, from a demo and a master. They mm. just hear it. It's either great or it isn't. A big part of that is mindset. You know, like uh, 20 years ago, you, you and I could have had the same conversation. And I would have heard that conversation coming to me saying, Steve, you're not ready. Uh, forget about it. And now I, I could hear that same conversation and say, OK, uh, there's certain work that I need to do. What do I do? You know, so how you approach it and how you frame it, you know, I mean, I think that's the thing I learned more than anything else with you. I mean, all the rest came, you know, it was baked into the cake. I think that uh, every artist is at a different place in their in their journey. And some are in the middle of a multiple recordings. Mm -hmm. They've already done several. And they're, you know, a producer's job with them is to acknowledge the work that's done before um but at the artist's discretion if they need to make a shift or if the market is changing and they need to rebrand or recalculate um that's that's one of the things that uh, a producer can bring is a new sound or while still maintaining an eye to what the artist ultimately does best um there are other people that have never made a record before and they're looking for their first shot. They're looking for a launching pad. Mm -hmm. And that's where there's actually more heavy lifting being done because we don't actually know who this artist is and what they're about. And so I try to ask good questions early so that we can get to really good answers early. That is imperative when you don't have a major label budget to like try on a bunch of producers, try on a bunch of sessions, um, burn through some cash and see which one works best. So it's important for new artists to get with a producer that will truly ask good questions and push them to clarify where their strengths are. Yeah, very often it's the why, ask the right questions. You know, I mean, that's, that's a good rule of thumb in life overall, you know? Well, and the why question, why make a recording? I mean, there are 40,000 new recordings being made in Canada every week. So um, that's not including the United States or the world. Mm -hmm. I think I, ha I have to is the best answer. <laughs> well, it's always best to be with an artist that can't not do it. Yeah. You know, if, if they can let it go, it, then they're probably not in it for the long haul. And they're not necessarily going to have a thick enough skin to get through all the bumps in the road. I love it. Absolutely. Yeah. Makes so much sense. I mean, the recording process truly is a journey. I mean, it's not just a musical journey, but for me, you know, speaking from my experience, it was a journey into my life, you know, and if I was honest throughout the process, I grew as a person, which in turn, I grew as an artist, which I grew as a person and, a, and an artist. That's an important cycle, don't you think? Yeah, I think that um, all, all good music has a personal aspect to it. Um, and it, people do music for different reasons, though. So with some artists, it is uh, a personal diary. For other artists, it's a climb to the billboard charts. Uh, and both of them are valid. It's really good to know what you're in it for early so mm -hmm. that you're not uh, shooting at the wrong bullseye. You know, um, people that are thinking they're making an artistic record, but they really want to be at the top of the billboard charts in a particular world where artistry is not the most important thing. Um, style is the most important thing. Coolness, cool factor is the, is more important than art. And so it's just good to, to ask those kinds of questions early. Why am I doing this? Who is my potential audience? How do I grow my existing fan base? Um, and that will help an artist move much quicker up rungs in their ladder. There are many ladders to climb, right? But mm. you need to identify which ladder you're climbing and then what's the best way to move you up that ladder. Yeah, it's like snakes and ladders. Pick the right ladder, right? Pick the right ladder. Yeah, yeah. Now, Doug, a lot of success for a, a musician or an artist in the studio depends on how much, you know, pre-production or how ready ahead of time they are before they get there. Uh, doing that, you'll save money, uh, for one, but the overall end product is going to be better because you're less stressed and more relaxed, you know, as an example. Can you speak about how important it is to be prepared when an artist gets to a studio? Most important thing that an artist needs is songs 
that's the most important thing. So the songs need to be ready first. You need to take a look at lyric. You need to take a look at hooks. You need to look at structure. The song should work on a piano, should work on a guitar. Um, if you get through that stuff, then the pre-production process is much easier. Then you're just looking at, well, how do we realize this? We know the song works. It's like a nugget that you could sit around, uh, uh, you know, at a beach party and just jam it out. And, you be, you know, listening to sitting on the dock of the bay and you go, well, that's a smash. Uh, and you can just hear it in the song. And after that, you know, there's some pre-production that you need to be thinking about. What's the sound of the record? Who are the actors that are going to be in this movie, so to speak? You know, who are we hiring for musicians? What's the sound of the record going to be? What's the uh, target market? What's the chart? Uh, what's out there right now? How do we delineate uh, what we're doing, distinguish what we're doing from others, but also make something that's uh, easily identifiable so that, you know, promotional people and publicists can talk easily about the project? Well, right now, um, you know, musicians are kind of resurfacing online. I'm, I'm seeing a number of people who have kind of, you know, turned their back on the industry and said, I'm done, uh, are kind of coming back again. They're almost, it's almost like I have to do this, you know, or in some cases, shamed. <laughs> you know, well, so-and-so is doing it. I guess I should, too, you know. But I, I'm really encouraged by all of the musicians sharing their stuff again online and coming out and taking that chance you know it's a very healthy time you know um i'm just wondering if you could give maybe some advice to some musicians at like maybe three different levels and, and kind of encourage them on what they can do you know for instance uh some things that because as, as we say this could be a very valuable and productive time for musicians and artists you know so right uh if if you're at the level like say your you know music is your dream uh you're not professional yet you're not earning any dollars on it but you spend hours in your basement you know and in, in, in your bedroom and you're practicing and you're doing everything what do you need to do to get to the next level well certainly in terms of this lockdown that we're all experiencing now is the time to get your home studio set up take the time to you know find a little place in your apartment or in your house that you can dedicate if it's a tiny little corner of a room or its own room where you can set up a couple speakers have your computer there make sure you you know have a little interface that's going to work um, just to get music you know microphone you're singing and your instrument in and out of your computer and then spend a little time doing some tutorials and figuring out how the software works um, you don't have to become a recording engineer as a matter of fact i would suggest not getting so deep into it that you forget about songwriting mm -hmm. but you should know how to use it well enough so that you can archive what you do at the very least every single phone can do a recording so learn how your memos works or how your little recording app uh, works on your Android um, and and just be able to capture songs and to that end the next thing I would say to all artists regardless is that this is an opportunity to write to spend uh, I would say a daily amount of time whether it be 30 minutes or three hours whatever um, you feel you have energy for to be writing new material Mm. Uh, and lastly, I would say that one of the cool things we are learning in this lockdown is how to collaborate online. So, yes, the video conferencing has been leading the way in terms of uh, connecting with people. So we're all doing Zoom meetings, FaceTime meetings, uh, Facebook Messenger. Um, there's there's a, a team viewer. There's all these different types of um, software that allow you to connect on the video side. There are some new applications that allow us to actually communicate on the music side. Um, uh, some software you can use on the audio side is Audio Movers at audiomovers.com, which lets you play music back and forth full bandwidth in real time. And the other one is called Session Wire, and that allows you to collaborate. None of this is at a point where we can actually jam together in real time because there's too much latency moving audio over the Internet. But we can very quickly write songs together. And uh, I'm able to coach vocal sessions remotely 
capture the vocal, have it uploaded to the cloud, have it down in my system almost instantaneously, and then be able to deliver finished mixes without us being in the same room at the same time. And while that's not my preferred way of working, uh, it is in this time allowing artists to, as I said earlier, get prepared for when the gates open. So the artists that are most prepared are the ones that are going to succeed and uh, rise above. I think one of the shakedowns that's happening is that this lockdown will, um, it's going to take the knees out uh, of a lot of artists that are mm. maybe just dabblers. You know, um, there's not going to be enough room for it. The industry has been hit really hard. It's going to take a while to get back. And um, if they're dabblers, they're going to have a really hard time uh, surviving. Mm. And it just means if you're serious, really bear down is what you're saying more than anything. I think. Exactly. The upside of it, the other side of that coin, is that those who are serious, who are working now and working hard, are going to succeed. Mm. Any encouragement you could give for maybe, you know, the people at the intermediate level where they're earning a living, they're paying the rent doing this, you know, and maybe a few extra bucks. And now that's all been taken out, you know, from under them. Like you say, you know, the knees have been knocked out. But um, what can they do at this point to keep themselves from not getting discouraged? Yes. Well, there's nothing I can say. I don't have any uh, absolute solutions to this big problem as what do we do now that our work has disappeared but i can say that uh they shouldn't let go of their dream just because they can't work in music right now mm -hmm. so um the doors will open there's no question we can't lock down the world forever so they will find uh, a vaccine eventually and we will go back to work and use this time to assess what you've done well so far and how you can better what you've done so far so that when you do enter the market again you're going to do so with more focus and more energy yeah the the irony is you can be more disciplined right now because you have such a flexible schedule really yeah i mean you, you've got time so now like i said is the time to write songs it's the time to learn software it's the time to reach out and make uh new friends online it's time to collaborate online there are a lot of things to do if, uh, and a lot of hours in the day. So I do understand that we've all been hit really hard and we don't have the same income streams that we had before. Um, and some are really suffering and, and my heart goes out to everyone in that situation. And all of us are trying to figure out how to do, um, our work in this crazy time. But, uh, I, I, I'm remaining hopeful that, um, not only, will the um, clouds uh, break apart in the sunshine again, but um, that there's just so much good things that come out of doing music and, uh, and that musicians will continue to make the contributions that only they can make. So quickly, where can we find you online or what can we expect to see uh, from uh, Douglas Romano in the near future? Well, I'm available uh, at douglasromano.com. Um, I have a new producer project called Sky Machine, and I have three new singles that will be coming out uh, this year, staged throughout the year. Um, one with an artist in Berlin, another an artist in Nashville, and another, uh, the artist is in Melbourne, Australia. So um, that's under my producer name, Sky Machine. Um, I've just released um, a record with Kelsey Maine, which is a, she's a rising star uh, new country artist. Um, and uh, there's another artist, Nicole Ray, who's a country artist in, uh, both these are in Ontario, um, both nominated for awards at the uh, Country Music Association of Ontario Awards that are coming up. So I'm excited for both of them. And I have some uh, new singles coming out in both LA and in Nashville. So lots on the go, but um, we're all... Uh, uh, just enjoying this time to regroup and getting ready to um, drop a bunch of new music. Well, there's lots to look forward to from you and uh, from your fans, I would say, at this point. And uh, I'd be one of them. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Steve. Back at you.
Well, Doug, I want to thank you for joining us on Down Home Corner. And I, I want to thank you as well because of everything you've done for me. I mean, you, you, you took someone with, you know, no musical experience whatsoever. Uh, back in the day, I was just a guy with a dream to record a CD. And, and you helped. You know, you helped me achieve that dream. It was, you know, a journey that we shared together and uh, also with other talented people out there. So, you know, as I said earlier, it's a life milestone for me, really. You know, and, and throughout that journey, I gained experience, but I gained the right experience. And that was so important to me. You know, I mean, uh, I got to do things in the right way because of what you taught me and, and helped me to learn, you know. And um, I, I, I really... the. Maybe the best part of it was was gaining a friendship, you know, with with such a great couple like you and Patricia, you know. So I mean, there are so many great benefits out of it, but most of all, it's the music, you know, because music has an impact on the world, and it always will. So you help me tap into that consciousness and be part of something bigger than all of us. So I'm very grateful to you, Doug. Thank you. Well, thank you for saying that, Steve. That is my hope every time for for every um, project that I feel. Um, honored to be a part of and so thank you for bringing me into your musical world as well oh well that's sweet of you to say so and if justin bieber ever needs you know a vocal or something tell him ah maybe i'd work at scale for him just you pass it on i'm all that's all i'm saying already done steve it's already in his, <laughs> already in his inbox i love you you're still lying to me and i love you for it have a great one <laughs> doug thanks again man you too steve bye for now i'll never forget the day i picked up my cds a thousand pressings of my album Love, Lies, and Other Obsessions by Stephen Bijou. It was surreal, it was emotional, and it was one of the proudest moments of my life. I unwrapped it, opened it, and there were my lyrics, my songs, my achievement. Years of planning, dreaming, and working my ass off were all there in my hand and on my speakers. The feeling was magical, it was thrilling, a little like Christmas, only I paid for my own gift. Well, it was okay, it was what I always wanted. Now, it wasn't a feeling that I had arrived or anything. It was more a feeling that I belonged in the music world, finally. I felt legitimate. I had something to say, and I was now willing to share it with the world. And I finally felt I had earned my place. Listen or don't, I was here. Like me or not, I belonged here. That confidence gave me inspiration to write more, record more, and in turn share more. It was a beautiful, fulfilling cycle I had entered, and I wish everyone who's ever called themselves a musician could experience. And I guess that's the point to this show. There's so much talent back home. There's so much fodder for writing and so many stories to tell. Some of the most talented musicians in the world come from the Maritimes. Now, when I first got involved in music in the 90s, I was anxious to get home and to talk with musicians and share some stories. But I was disappointed that so few people were writing. Everybody was in a band, but nobody seemed to be writing. And honestly, that's the biggest buzz of music, creating it. Honestly, how many different ways can you play Brown Eyed Girl? Yes, you can give someone else's song a different interpretation, a fresh take on something, or you can even improve someone's song. It's never really yours, though. It can never really say what you really want it to say. And if you're a musician, I'll bet you have something to say. I'll bet you want your voice to be heard, and whether you know it or not, the world wants to hear from you. Now, if you need examples to inspire you, Think of award-winning songwriter and recording artist Brenda Best. Rick Reese has recorded a great album and he's played to thousands. Leslie Woods Myers continues to write and record. Just three examples of musicians from Camelton who write, record, and perform their own creations. They're still doing it. Why? Because they have to. And the world is a little bit of a better place because of it. So write, record, get it out there. You may never get to work with someone at the level of Douglas Robineau, but you will find your own path, and you will find the right people at the right time. If music is your dream, and you want to make a difference, write, record, put it out there. Don't worry if it's good enough. Just worry about writing the next one. Music is community, and the more you create, the more we connect. In the words of my friend Douglas Romano, suspend your disbelief. 
And that's our show. Down Home Corner is produced by Mike Saketa and me, Steve Bijou. My thanks to Douglas Romano, my friend and musical mentor. Doug, thank you for your friendship over the years. Thank you for the work that you've done with me. And thank you for all you do for this industry and the people that you work with. You're one of a kind, pal. And the world is a better place musically and overall just because of you. If you have ideas for upcoming shows, please drop us a line at downhomecorner.com. Check out all our shows. And if you need a professional voice for your business or an upcoming project, just check out my audio demos and drop me a line, steve at downhomecorner.com. Remember, everybody has a story and we are all connected. I'm your host, Steve Bijou. See you next time on Down Home Corner. Down Home Corner.